What's up guys, Evil D here, and I'm back for some more Esperanto slash World of Warcraft lessons. Now, as always, we start with some revision. So first up, what is the word for river, which is what we're running across right now? Well, not across, but next to. It is Rivero. Rivero. Okay, and what was the word for lake? It was Lago. Lago. And do you remember how to say something um, behind or after, uh, say that log there? So the word that I'm looking for is behind or after. And don't use Malantal. It is Post. And do you remember how to say Raptor? It is Raptoro. Raptoro. Now, as you can see, we're moving into a new area, so this should hopefully make it a bit more interesting for you guys. We are going up. We're level 12 now, so we've gone pretty good in the game. So, ooh, I'm going to do some more revision in a sec. Whoa, what level is that? That's not good. Ooh, well, let's stay away from that. I think I probably took the wrong way to get to this destination that I'm going to. Hopefully, this won't result in my death. Basically, when that's a skull, it's bad. It's all bad. Okay, so what was the word for water, which is what we're fleeing in right now? It is akvo. Akvo. And do you remember how to say under, as in I'm under the water? That is sub. And to say I'm under the water, we say mi estas sub la akvo. Mi esta sub la acvo. And do you remember how to say fish? It is fisho. Now, I wasn't originally planning to teach you this, but I figured while I'm here, you remember how I taught you tent, and that was tendo, and then I taught you the grouping of tents, and it was tendado? Well, a group of fish, a school of fish, is a fishado. Fishado. You see that ado suffix? That means a group. So you can also use it to mean schools of fish. Um, you can say bovado, which is a group of cows or a herd of cows. So it's like group of anything, basically. So a group of fish is fishado. I thought I'd just point that out while we're here. Now, I'm probably taking the worst way in the world to get to this, this area that I'm going to. Um, let me see if I can get up here. Is this What level is this frog? Okay, so I can kill the frog. I'm, I'm good in that respect. I honestly don't know where I'm going right now. I'm just walking. 21. Oh, crap. It's seen me. Oh, oh, that thing is way higher level than me. It could probably kill me in two shots. So let's just keep fleeing further north, shall we? Okay, and what was the word for object? I taught you this in a few lessons back. It is objecto. Objecto. And what was the way to say uh, beautiful? It is bella. Bella. And how do you say ugly? It is Malbella. Malbella. Okay, so I'm just going to practice a few more little words because we have learnt a lot and I just want to make sure we've ingrained this stuff before I move right into the lesson. So do you remember how to say where? So that is Kie. Kie. I'm, I'm actually meant to be going up that way. Can I get up here? Can I go up this little, this little road type thing, this path? By the way, the word for like a path or like a, yeah, I guess just a path, is voyo, voyo. And we're going to encounter more and more of those, so I figure you might as well learn that word while we're at it. So it's voyo. And do you remember how to say what thing? That is kio, kio. Okay, that is alliance flags. That means that's alliance territory. Or wait, no, is that alliance territory or are they just alliance mobs? I'm going to try this, guys. This might result in my death, but I'm going to try and kill this person here. They're very high level, but we'll see how this goes, shall we? Oh, this is probably going to go really bad. Okay, and do you remember how to say there, as in located there? It is tie. Tie. And how would you say... Oh! No, not that, no. Oh, better heal, better heal. Oh, craps. I haven't got my healing thingy actually, like, activated. Oh. Oh, this is bad. I'm getting really hurt right now. <laughs> She's out. Her, her punching me is actually way more painful than her actual, like, um, spell that she was using. 
Oh, this is going to be like a hard one. Okay, um, so yeah. Do you remember how to say, uh, where is the Night Elf? Now, you learnt Night Elf like one of the first lessons, we haven't touched it since. So how would you say, where is the Night Elf? Kie estas la nocta elfo? Or you could say, Kie estas la nocta elfo? It's, it's really up to you which one you choose. But I like to say nocta elfo. I know other people have got other preferences, but that's that's up to you. So basically to say where is the in Esperanto, you just say Kie estas la, and you should have picked that one up a few lessons ago. Now, we're gonna, you know the word for grass already, well I think I taught you that in the previous lesson, but if you don't, the word for grass is perdubo, perdubo. I'm pretty sure I've taught you that already. But the word that I wanted to teach you was bush or shrubbery, so you know like these little shrubbery thingies that you see around us. Um, like that there, that's like kind of a shrubbery, it's a very small shrubbery. God damn it, why is it so hard to find shrubbery? Okay, this is shrubbery. So the word for shrubbery, or you know, like bushes and stuff like that, is... Am I going to aggro that second one if I attack that? I'm going to stick away from that. Oh great, they're just getting higher and higher in level. So, the word for that is arbusto. Arbusto! <laughs> that just scared the hell out of me. Oh god, oh god, there's two of them! Flee! Flee! No, I'm going to die! No! <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Oh, don't get stuck behind the pole! God damn it. Okay. This is going bad already. <laughs> Actually, if I res here, is this a safe area? No, I don't want to. Usually when you, like, wake yourself up in the game, you basically, um, not wake yourself up, but, like, res yourself at the graveyard, it results in, basically, you being damaged. Anyway, back into the lesson. So what was the word for shrubbery? Do you remember that? It was arbusto. Arbusto. And do you remember what the word for grass was? It was herbo. Herbo. Okay. Now, into the crux or the crutch or whatever. Not the crutch, like that crutch. Oh, this is going bad. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how what the word kia means now i started with the actual word itself because in english we don't have a direct like translation for this word okay so let me just find where i can whoa that thing's level 19 okay i think we've got to go further north um can i get past this so yeah the word kia basically the best translation you could give directly for that word in english is what kind of okay so kia means what kind of. Now you're probably thinking, when the hell would I use what kind of? It doesn't sound like a, like an actual word or a combination that I'd ever need. Oh no, don't fall off the mountain. What was the word for mountain? It was monto, monto. So yeah, it, it doesn't sound like a word that you'd ever need, but it's used a lot in Esperanto in certain circumstances. So for instance, if you want to say describe the grass, okay, you would say Kia estas la herbo. So you're probably hey, is that someone like an actual player? Oh no, that's uh that's some Oh that's just a, a mob. Okay. How many people's he got attacking him? He's got a few, so let's try this. So if I wanted to say describe the night elf, I'd say Kia estas la nocta elfo. So you can see there Kia, basically, what it's looking for is um, an adjective response, okay? So if I'm saying describe the night elf, what I'm looking for is a descriptive word of the night elf. So that's why it ends in an us sound, because it's looking for an adjective. Oh craps, oh craps, not again. Please, no, not again. Oh, no! I will defeat you, you night elf. So how would you say describe the night elf? Oh no, this is bad. Bad source. Ugh. Okay, this lesson might be just a lot of me dying, okay? So yeah, Kia estas la nocta elfo means describe the night elf. So what am I saying now? Kia estas la arbo. I'm basically saying describe the tree. So again, what would I say for, um, what does this mean? Kia estas la arbusto. Again, I'm basically saying describe the bush. Now, the reason I'm using describe and I'm not saying um, what kind of is the bush 
is because what kind of is not something we use in English and it's hard to associate it when we're learning the language. So that's what I like to do. I like to, when I'm using Kia, I like to think of how it, what it means in that context in English when I was first learning. So now obviously Kia, since it really means what kind of, I'm just going to check what level. Why well, is everything so lo high level here? I don't know if I can kill it all. Let's try anyway. I'm game. Oh, miss. I'm not game after all. Oh, please. Come on. Okay, so... We're going to learn the word for dragon, okay? Because we've got a dragon in front of us, so we might as well. And it looks like there's going to be more dragons in this area. Why is the ground shaking? Whoa. Okay. So the word for dragon is draco. Draco. So how would you say, describe the dragon? Kia estas la draco. Kia estas la draco. Oh man, this one's really hurting me too. Come on. If I could just go up like a level or two while I'm here, I'll be safe. So, now I'm going to ask you, how would you say, describe the grass? Kia estas la herbo. How would you say describe the tree? Kia estas la arbo. How would you say describe the sky? Kia estas la cielo. Now, obviously when you use kia in other contexts, it actually has a different meaning, okay? Like Sorry, it means the same thing, but our English translation of it changes. So, for instance, if I wanted to say, what a beautiful day. So I'm basically just, um, you know, I'm basically just saying, it's a beautiful day. So I'd say, what a beautiful day. That is another, uh, loca um, not location, but that's another time where you'd use Kia. You'd say, Kia Bella Tago. And that means, what a beautiful day. Okay? So... Kia estas la draco means describe the dra uh, the dragon. And if you wanted to say describe the mob as in this type of mob, you'd say Kia estas la estajo. Okay, I think I should head around the top of this mountain and go then down south. So I can go hand in this random quest that I've got down in that region. Okay. So, how would you say, describe the mountain? Kia estas la monto. And how would you say the mountain is brown? La monto estas bruna. Because remember, when you're asking describe, you're looking for an adjective in return. You're not looking for like a full-winded sentence about, oh, I don't know, the philosophy of freaking 16th century literature or anything. I don't know where that came from. So yeah, how would you then say, um, what a beautiful mountain. Kia Bella Monto. Okay, awesome. Now let's get around this beautiful mountain so I can go down south. What is that? Can I attack that? I don't know why, but I want to shoot that thing that's flying above me. Uh, it's a bit high. Okay, so we've learnt Kia now. And I'm going to teach you the word for in, okay? So the word for in is en, en. So that's just spelled E-N. So if you want to say, um, I'm in the water, you'd say, Mi estas en la acvo. Mi estas en la acvo. Now I'm going to teach you a tiny bit of the accusative case here. Okay, so you remember how to say, for instance, um, I have a, uh, what's something around here we've got, say I have a bush, okay, oh god, why did I choose that, <laughs> if you thought of something else, you're, you've got a dirty mind, so, I have a bush as in the one that's out here, the shrubbery, me havas arbusto, me havas arbusto, okay, just quickly heal up, again, so, if you want to, you've noticed there, like, as I've taught in the previous lesson, when it's the object of the transitive verb, it's in the accusative case. But the accusative case has more than that. Like, it doesn't just mean 
the object of transitive verbs. It's actually used for other things as well. And the next one I'm going to teach you is how it's used with movement. So, to say... Okay, so I'm going to use an example here because this is the best way to clarify this accusative case thing that I'm talking about where it can change the meaning of a sentence. So, where's that, where's that thing? Okay, it's over there, I'm safe. So, if I say, mi iras en lo domo, what does that mean? Now, you're probably thinking, it could mean I'm walking in the house, like I'm physically inside the house, or I'm walking into the house. So, in English, we say into, and then you've got en, which means in, so it must mean I'm inside the house. Well, that's not exactly the best way of thinking about it. So, if you want to say, mi iras en lo domo, that means... I'm walking within the house, so I'm already inside the house and I'm walking. But if you use the accusative case on the domo, so you say, mi iras en la domon, it completely changes the meaning of the sentence. Now, the way it changes it is en, uh, sorry, not en, um, the accusative case can mean, yes, the object of a transitive verb, but it also means uh, movement, okay? So, en la domo means inside the house. Whatever you're doing, you're already inside the house. En la domon means movement into the house. So, mi iras en la domo means I'm walking in the house. And mi iras en la domon means I'm walking into the house. So, you hear how the accusative case changes the meaning. So, let's just try another one. Let's, um, we're going to use mountain this time. Now, I know you can't walk into a mountain, but let's just assume that there's a cave because I don't want to teach you some, too many words. So let's say, um, for this, how would you say I'm walking inside the mountain? So I'm inside the mountain and I'm walking inside it. Mi iras en la monto. And how would you say I walk into the mountain? So I'm outside the mountain and then I walk into it. Mi iras en la monton. Now, this is a hard concept for, especially for English speakers. But we're going to practice this. I'm going to say different sentences and you need to tell me what I'm saying. Okay? So. Mi iras en la domon. So that means I walked into the house from outside. My inventory is full? What? I don't need that. I'm just going to quickly chuck that out. So what does mi iras en la domo mean? It means mi iras en la domo means I'm inside the house and I'm just walking around. Now, there is other cases when you can use this accusative movement. So for instance, say, um, let's, let's think of one. Okay, I have to teach you another word here in order to, to show you how this means. So, we're going to learn the word for table. It's an easy one, so don't stress on this. The word for table is tablo. Tablo. Sounds pretty much like table, yeah? So, if you're, let's assume that you're a mouse, okay? You're a mouse-sized human. So, if you said, mi iras sub la tablo, it means I'm under the table and I'm walking around. Because you didn't hear the accusative case in there on tablo. But if you say, mi iras sub la tablon, you're basically saying, I'm outside of the table and I've walked in under the table, okay? Now, English doesn't make this distinction through, like, accusative case or anything like this. It just uses, like, um, into and in and stuff like that. So you're going to have to get used to that. So let's just keep practicing that. So what is this? That looks new. I've never seen this stuff before. This is cool. So how would you say, I walk under the table? So I'm outside the table and I walk in under it. Mi iras sub la tablon. And how would you say, I walk into the mountain? I'm outside and I walk into it. Mi iras en la monton. And how would you say, um, I walk in the house. So I'm in the house and I'm just walking around. Mi iras en la domo. 
And final one, this is really cool, this, sorry, I just got distracted, this, this new thing looks really cool to me, I don't know what it is, just like a train track or something, yeah. Anyway, so how would you say, um, I walk, let's think, okay, I walk into the house from outside. Mi iras en la domon. Okay, so there's... I can't think of any more exact examples that we can... Oh, this is more my level. This is me. I've been killing things that are way too high level for me. But this is what I'm after. So yeah, I've given you a, a few examples to play with. Now we're just going to review everything we've learned in this lesson. Because we've learned two hard concepts for English speakers. So. Oh, uh, is something stabbing me? No. So, what is... How would you say... What a beautiful sky. I know this is actually a terrible sky, but anyway, maybe this is beautiful in Britain. So, what a beautiful sky. Kia bella cielo. And how would you say, describe the sky? What? Why is this now friendly? Okay. Kia estas la cielo. So, you can see the difference between them is I've put estas after kia. So, whenever you hear kia estas, just think... Um, describe the, uh, uh, just describe basically. So let's just put this on. And how would you say, describe the, the crocodile? This is kind of like a crocodile, I don't know. But we're gonna, we're gonna assume this is a crocodile. So how would you say, describe the crocodile? Kia estas la crocodilo. And how would you say the crocodile is bluish green? No, we just want one word. Let's just go blue. La crocodilo estas blua. And how would you say, um, what a beautiful mountain? I guess you're into all the industrial stuff. This is beautiful for you, but yeah. Or steampunk. Kia bella monto. Kia bella monto. And how would you say, describe the mountain? Kia estas la monto. Okay, I've definitely gone outside of my um, time limit for this particular lesson. So let's just finish up by killing someone, because that's always a good way to finish a lesson. And just do a little bit more revision on the few things that we've learned. So, what was the word for object? It was... Objecto. What was the word for... Um, bush? Or shrubbery? It was... Arbusto. And... What was the word for, uh, for house, uh, not for house, actually, you know, for house, let's go with that. Domo, and if you haven't got a house already, uh, you need a lot of repetition to learn then. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well that's pretty much it for the lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, you find this helpful. Um, I'm not sure if I've confused the hell out of you with the accusative case. Let me know in the comments below if you got this or if it was confusing. Um, otherwise, I'll just go over it again in another lesson with some more examples. So yeah, if you've liked it, give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well then, guess what I'm going to throw down into that pit of death? <laughs>